give him praise. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you, family. Wake up, get up, and move in your purpose. Yes, today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it right now. We are just excited to continue to grow together, to 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 provoke together, not by uh, trying to tell anybody what to do, but but the Bible says is that in Hebrews ten to twenty four is that we should provoke one another through love. And good work. See, I have to learn how to love God and then then learn how to love you because I learned how to love God. <laughs> oh, my my God. And, and you can never love, love learn love unless you get a relationship with the love maker, not the physical thing like that. See, we have to really get um, focused in our mind that when even we hear certain um, cliches that we acknowledge right away. That's he's, he's talking about God. <laughs> he ain't talking about something that happened on the outside because God is the creator of love. It says, in the, I remember I was in, in, in Sunday school as a little child. And the first thing my daddy taught me is that God is love. And so I knew I had to now develop a love relationship with him so I could develop love relationships with others. But I, I just want to share, you remember the other day we were, we were talking on Wednesday about Putting away, remember you had to put away all malice. Remember in First um, Peter chapter 2, it says, Therefore laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, all, all evil speaking, as newborn babes be a uh, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, in, in, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Oh, a lot of us can say we've tasted a lot of us could even say we've experienced, but are we really, oh, hallelujah, I'm going to touch you on this one today. Are we really staying consistent in knowing how gracious God is to us, how merciful he is to us? Because believe me, mercy is not because you deserved it or you did anything to, to, to receive it. Mercy is that he was merciful to us. Remember, he said in Hebrews chapter 10, he said he would make a new covenant with us and that we would now have to understand that new covenant was, was washing away everything. But we have we washed ourselves? Have we really got cleansed by Jesus? Oh, I, I have to ask my, myself that question because cleansing isn't in a shower. Cleansing is in my, my spiritual mind. Am I really growing spiritually and is my spiritual man growing daily? Or am I staying dormant and just saying I'm doing just enough to get by? I'm doing just enough for people to say, oh, okay, that's, that's, that looks right. That sounds right. But are you really living right on the inside? Oh, see, when you wake up in your mind, that's John 15. It says that I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. If you're not bearing more fruit, but you're saying, no, I'm doing it, Pastor E. I'm, I'm waking up in my mind. I'm getting up in my thinking, but my fruit basket is empty. You need to check yourself now because it's up to you to make the right decisions. Oh, stop making choices. Choices come like a like a five fingers. You keep making choices. But when you make a decision, you call somebody you trust and you and you confess that I must do better in this situation. I want to see better in my life and I need you to help me get there. Oh, don't tell me what to do. Just hold me accountable for what I've already said I'm going to do. And then I have to now be accountable. Are you ready to be accountable? See, when you're accountable, that means you're staying in God's will. You're not flipping in and out. You're not some timey. You're not when you want him and when you need him. You are consistent in a relationship with him. Now, some people say, well, I am in a relationship. Well, you know, when, when you meet Jesus, when you meet Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you now are, 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 are you know, in verse 3 of, of chapter 15 of John, it says, you are that it may be, wait, uh, he prunes you that it may be more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Watch chapter 4. Abide in me, wake up in him. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. He's telling us straight off, if you want what I have, come abide in me. I have opened the door, <laughs> but you have to walk in. You have to make the decision that I'm going to enter into the place that has already been prepared for me, been prepared for you, and you can have it today. 
A lot of people will say, no, nah, man, go through this 20-step program. Yeah, you got a, you got a, a lifetime program to live. Uh, somebody can say, do this book or do this conference. You got a life of conferences and a life of books right here before you that you must grow into to receive the knowledge of God to now walk by faith and not by sight. See, faith is that word that 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 word that that is relevant in you, prevalent in you. It's not what you can see on the outside. Good morning, Minister Charlene. God bless you, woman of God. It's not what people are saying about you. It is the spirit that is in you. And he said, if you do not abide in him, neither can he abide in you. What are we talking about? That means we're doing things his way. We have surrendered our all to him. And we said enough is enough of me doing my way. Because when you meet Jesus, oh my God, see, 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 even when you're in your sin, people going to run, run your way and not want to have anything to do with you. But when you meet Jesus, oh, let me tell you something. He's going to give you a ministry. He's going to wake you up and send you on your way. Oh yeah, you don't want to follow him. You're going to, after he didn't cleanse you, you're going to want to follow him. But what is he going to do? Er, no, 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 no. You go tell everybody at home. <laughs> What the Lord has done for you. Now, are you doing that? Are, are you really activating? I'm not talking about in the four walls of your house. I'm talking about going home. Good morning, Pat. God bless you, woman of God. Are you really going? Or have you really met Jesus? Or do you really know Jesus? It will be my question today. Because <laughs> when you wake up in your mind, you are abiding in him and he's abiding in you. And then when you get up in your thinking, you are now making the decision. Philippians 2 and 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Do you have a big reputation? See, I don't have a reputation. I don't. It died. I have a reputation because I serve the reputation. <laughs> And I know what he told me to do. He said, go home and tell, tell everybody what the Lord has done for you. Because let me tell you, I was that one uh, a demon-possessed man. Mm. I was that one man cutting himself with rocks and, 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 and beating himself up. I was that same man that people had isolated in the tombs. Oh, Jesus. I was that same man that they hid in the mountains. I was that same man. Oh, my God. But when I saw Jesus, I had to run to him. You did to so you did it too. I had to run to him. And when I ran to him, he said, Come out. Oh my God. And the spirit spoke. I said, What's your name? Jesus said, What's your name? He said, We are Legion and we are many. Mm. Well, they knew that they knew. They knew. They knew the consequences of this. But they said, Oh no, no, we know it's not our time. But can you just send us on over here to in the swine? They ain't nobody. Nobody cares about the swine. You remember the story? And he and he said, Okay, we go go in the swine. Watch this. When, when you think somebody is stupid, oh, Jesus. See, it ain't what you look like on the outside. It's what you represent on the inside. I believe them swine were dedicated to the Holy Spirit of God. Because as soon as those legions, which were many, entered into them, what did they do? They jumped off the cliff. They jumped off the cliff. They said, no, we would rather die a death in the flesh than to be tormented in the spirit. Mm. They made a decision woo, to say, oh, for him, I will live and for him, I will die. Oh, my God. You remember the story? Then the people came. They knew about that crazy man. Then the people came and they said, what happened? They got the story that the swine had, had, had jumped off the cliff. Now, it wasn't just one. It was two. They said it was over 2,000. When the swine jumped off the cliff, the people got mad. <laughs> they didn't thank Jesus because he healed the man that was tormenting himself. They cared nothing about the man. That's why they sent him in the mountains. That's why they put him in the tombs with the dead folks. But when he met Jesus, good morning, Joe. God bless you, bro. But when he met Jesus, he ran to Jesus because he knew that was the only way out. Haven't you ran to him? When you was possessed with them spirits, what, 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 did you run to him when you was going through all those mental uh, uh, capacities against yourself? Good morning, Olivia. What, what, did you run to him when them spirits was telling shoot yourself, kill yourself, keep killing yourself and keep doing the, what the word says don't do? Mm, that was me. Go to Mark chapter 5. You say, I'm telling you a story. I'll give you the one to read. Mark chapter 5. I'm going to show you something today in this word. Oh, my God. It's going to blow your mind. Now, remember. Remember when I said that 
Remember, I said that after the swine jumped off, the people came and got mad at Jesus and said, leave our town. Why would they tell him to leave their town? Come on, somebody answer that question. Because their 2,000 swine had just jumped off the, the ledge. Don't you know them 2,000 swine represented pork chops, pig feet, chitlins, and, and, and bacon, and, 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 and skins, and, and all those things? Those, that was their meat. That was their living. They were eating off of the pigs. They were raising these pigs, and they lost. They Come on, Pastor Dwayne, tell them. They lost their money. See, some people care more about money than they do about God. And God was right there in front of them. They had seen. They knew that this man was crazy. They knew this man had lost every bit of his mind. But they would rather deal with him and his loud, obnoxious acting than to have God come and Bless them because they lost their money. They say, leave here. <laughs> Woo! Let me tell you, and I'm going to tell you something right now. Jesus is not going to stay somewhere he is not wanted. Because immediately he got in the boat. <laughs> he said, all right, peace. That goes for you. You may be saying he's not around. Why? Because he, he's not wanted. Oh, I know your mouth says it. I know you, you clap your hands at church and say it, but does your life represent that you want Jesus in it? Ah, come on now. Are, are you doing what it says? Come on, Jesus, I want you around. I take my money, take my house, take my cars. I would rather have Jesus than diamonds and pearls. Oh, is that true in your life? See, that's the question you have to ask yourself at some point in time of your relationship with God is that are you really ready to lose it all for him? And most folks would rather turn their back on God and say, oh, no, it ain't my time right now. That's turning your back on God. Oh, I ain't ready for that right now. That's too much. That's too much. That's too much. I got to work too hard. I got to give too much of my own private time up. Oh, I got to give all my monies away. Oh, no, 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 no. That's okay, Jesus. I'm doing okay over here. Do you know? He ain't going to stick around. He's going to get up. That's why your mind one day is doing good and the next day is doing bad because you do not. He does not. No, he's not wanted. Are you wanting him in your life today? Oh, my God. Because when you want him in your life, you're going to run to him. And, yes, he's going to deliver you of all the demons. Oh, yes, and you are going to, good morning, Olivia. And, yes, you are going to want to follow him. But he's going to say, ah, no, 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 no. Don't follow me. This is what I got for you. I got a ministry for you. I need you to go home. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I need you to go home and tell everybody about what the Lord has done for you. You. See, he's talking to me too. See, that's my purpose is to tell everybody what the Lord has done for me. And then he just didn't go just to his house. See, them people knew he was crazy. They was the one that sent him. <laughs> them the ones that had exiled him. Believe me, can you imagine when you come back home and you sing? Oh, they, they can see a change in you. They can see that you're not the same person that you used to be. They will now say, whoa, whoa, whoa. What did he say? You can do what? I can't do nothing. But let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Oh, when I was crazy. You remember when I was cutting myself with the rocks? God saved me. He pulled them demons out of me. And guess what he did? He sent them to the swine. And let me tell you, don't rebuke what you think is dumb because the swine said, I'm smarter than that. I'm not going to live with this. I'd rather die of flesh and live in the spirit. Oh, but look about all the people that got left behind that, 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 re that refused Jesus. He got in the boat immediately. And went on over to the other side. Oh my God. But that man, mm, he took on his responsibility to change his thinking. This man was no more rugged. This man was no more toe down. This man was now a new minister <laughs> that went forth and told the word of God. He said, look what God has done for me. Come on, somebody. When you know you met Jesus, when you know he had cleansed you, you better get up and go tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. Wake up in your mind. I mean, get up in your spirit. Get up in your thinking. I mean, train yourself. You must go to work. It's time to do the work, y'all. Not go to work. Do the work. We go, we've been going to work forever, and we've still been dying in the flesh. Thank you, Minister Charlene. Oh, my God. It's time to do the work. Not go to work. Let's do the work. Be the work. And make sure that it's your example that's showing people that I'm, oh, when I seen Jesus, I ran to him because I needed this, I needed this thing out of me. All this hate, all this anger, all this, all the disappointments, I needed it out of me. You better start running to Jesus.
Mm. I, I'm talking about a race you're trying to win because there's some other folks out there trying to run to Jesus too. I want to beat you. Oh, I'm going to pick it up some. Because I know when I get there, oh, he's going to say, come on out of there. What, 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 what's your name? And they're going to they gonna admit it. They said legions. And, that, and they said they were many. Watch this. And she said, I've told you the story. Let me give you the word. Chapter 5 of Mark. Then they came to the other side of the sea, of the country of Gardeness. And when he had come out of the boat. Now, don't forget, he wasn't by himself. <laughs> Them disciples was in the boat stuck the whole time. This man people thought was crazy. Ain't you ever seen Crazy Larry coming down the street at, in your hood? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Don't you remember Crazy Larry? You see him coming. You be like, man, now nah, cross the street, bro. I don't even want to deal with Crazy Larry today. Come on. We all had a Crazy Larry, y'all. Keep it real. Keep it real. Oh, my God. We all had a Crazy Larry. We was like, oh, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. They be like, come on over, man. We doing something. Man, is Crazy Larry over there? Oh, no, nah, he ain't here, man. Then we, oh, we all right then. We all had a Crazy Larry. Them folks, them disciples were sitting in them because they never, they never got out the boat. Um, it, there was never no instance of them getting out the boat. They, you know, them boys had a lot of fear in them. Oh my God. They sat there, they seen Crazy Larry because they remember Crazy Larry from back when they was doing what they was doing. Oh my God. And they had not learned. Remember, they had not learned how to go out and, and, and heal and, 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 and raise the dead. They had not learned how to trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean. I don't understand it. They were still in training. They got stuck in the boat. Oh my God. But he wasn't alone. So don't think that he was alone. But he's the only one that got out the boat. It says, uh, 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 verse 5. Then they came to the other side of the sea, uh, to the uh, country of, of Gardenese. And when they had came out of the boat, immediately there he met out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwellings among the tombs. And no one could bind him. This dude is crazy Larry, man. Watch. Not even the chains because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. I'm telling you, this dude was so crazy. They was trying to put him in a straight jacket. Watch this. Not even the chains because he had been, been often bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled part up by him. This dude was strong. I know I'm reminding y'all out about that crazy Larry from when you was in school growing up in your neighborhood. Watch this. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stone. Man, he made noise, bruh. They tried to lock the man away. They tried to put him in shackles, but them demons. Woo, I know you done did some wild stuff with them demons in you, boy. Jesus, you'd be like, how did I do that? It was them demons in you. Watch this. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. Don't think just because you didn't lost your mind. Mm. When you see Jesus, everything can change immediately. What he says, watch this. <laughs> Woo! When he saw Jesus from afar, it wasn't close. He, he, he ran and worshiped him and cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I done? To do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God, I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Remember I told you, this ain't no physical battle. It's the spiritual stuff going on right here. For he said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly. I mean, he, look, this is the crazy Larry. Please, 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 please. Get me, you can, take me out of this, out of, out of Larry's body. But, but don't cast us in hell yet. Let, let us go over there and, you know, thinking that the, that the, that, that the, uh, the swine was, every, everybody thinks swine is the, is the lowest, nastiest thing on this earth. Everybody does. Watch this. And he says, and then uh, my name is Legion. And he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. Now, a large herd of swine, large herd, it was about 2,000 swine. Go do your study. A large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him saying, send us to the swine that they, that we may enter them. And at once, Jitsi, let me tell you something else. Oh my God. When you ask God for deliverance, Immediately, Jesus is going to change your life. If you won't change, I'm telling you, you need to run to Jesus this morning. <laughs> Jesus! And you need to run to him earnestly. I know we're, we're not perfect. 
We're not what we used to be, but we shoot are not what we should be, and we need to get better now. I will do better now. Watch this. Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. I told you, they was willing to die a death, a flesh death, then a spiritual death. Never dishonor who honors God. Mm. He says the rocks go cry out. No, it's not your business. He said, he's, he, it's, 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 it, look, look, check this out. If I only deal with me, I've said this, I say this all the time. If I only deal with me, there's enough work right here every day for me to wake up in the morning and go to bed every night with a lot of work to keep me sane. But even in the process of that, watch what your ministry is. Okay, so those who fed the swine and, and they told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to see Jesus and saw that the one who had been demon possessed had and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. Ooh, see, when folks start to see you in their right mind, they'd be like, oh, man, we need clear. We need crazy Larry. People don't see how cra crazy we are because we got somebody out here making noise. See, when the when, when, when the noise settled, you can see everybody's craziness. Mm, you're going to catch that one. It's going to come around right now. And they were afraid, and those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. They went, Look, they had a bunch of pigs somewhere else. <laughs> they weren't trying to lose their money. And they knew that had to be God that could deliver that demon-possessed man. And believe me, he had did some terrible things in that city and in that country, or they would have never wanted to chain him up. If he just was out there in the tombs, in the, in the graveyard, and, and in the hills, bothering nobody, but just making, no, they would not mess with him. He had to go and be violent in their city for them to want to try to put him out. <laughs> come on. And guess what? Then you got to know he didn't come from there. That wasn't his home. <laughs> My God. A lot of us is, went to places just because we had to get away from home. Because home could see when we was doing wrong. Home knew we wasn't right. Home knew that, that, that something wasn't right in our life and we was messing up. And we were on a, on a quick road to death. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not the only one. My God. Watch this. So, uh. And then, they, oh, wait, wait, wait. and then, oh, verse 17. Then they be began to plead with him to depart from their region. And watch this. Immediately, I'm telling you now, when you don't want God around, he ain't sicking around. You can say all you want to, oh, no, God is here, but you murmuring and complaining. No, he's not. Oh, God, he'll never leave me, never forsake me. <laughs> okay, you, you left him. He didn't leave and forsake you. He said he'll never leave you and forsake you, mean that, that he'll, never, he'll never be angry. He'll never be worried. He'll never be full of doubt. But when you have it, you left him. <laughs> so let's not get it twisted. Oh, God's still here. No, he's not. If you are not inviting him in, he didn't went somewhere else because guess what? There's some other folks out there inviting him in and wanting to spend time with him and wanting to worship him in spirit and in truth. Don't get it twisted. You are not just some uh, 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 privileged baby that, that God is just sitting there waiting to get. He's not. God got a lot of things to do and a lot of people trying to do it with him. But guess what? Because of Jesus, all you got to do is run to him. Come on now. All you got to do is run to him fervently. Come on. Fiverly. You got to get on it. You got to run to him. Oh, my God. And when you run to him, he going to say, come on out of him right now. Release that man. And then you're going to be clean. Oh, you're going to be in your right man, mind. Verse 18. And he and, and him, when he got into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him. He said to him, go home to your friends. And tell them what things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And then he departed. See, it wasn't a lot of sitting around waiting and waiting. When you meet Jesus, oh my God, this is going to help somebody else. This is your sermon Sunday. When you meet Jesus, when you run to him and he pulls them, them spirits out of you and he cleans you and makes you new again. Woo, you're going to want to follow him. Oh, you're going to have every desire. Can I go with you? Can I just stay with you? I don't want to go back there. And he's going to say, no, go home to your family and to your friends and tell them what I have done for you. Have you done that yet? Are you still saying, oh, they don't want to hear God's stuff? They don't want, no, you got to go tell your family and your friends what God has done for you. I'm talking to all of us. Nobody is, 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 is absent from this message this morning. 
We all had to run to Jesus. We all were demon possessed. He no respect their person. We all have been through something. But what are you doing now? Watch this. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis. Now let me tell you something about that place, Decapolis. I looked that up. And I was hearing uh, Pastor Tony Evans teach on, on the capitalists a long time ago. The capitalists, when you look at it, it was a big city, a big country of over 10 cities. So not only did he go to his family and friends, because remember, he had been he had been in a lot of bars. <laughs> he had burnt up a lot of territory, y'all. Come on, I'm, I'm trying to make this clear this morning. He had burnt, and see, when you go home to your family and friends, it ain't just the people that live at 99999 Sycamore Street. It's everybody you've encountered through all the cities, through all the bars, through all the places that you have been. And that don't mean you got to go get a beer in there and do it. You need to proclaim what the Lord has done for you and how he has shown compassion on you. Why? So he can do it for them. See, they'll believe through your testimony because they see, they, they remember you crazy, Larry. They remember how you used to act like that because you broke up their bar. You destroyed their establishment. You beat them up. They remember you. Oh, my God. But when they see you coming back and you ain't talking about what you done done, you're talking about what he has already done. But now you can share it. That he has saved you, re who redeemed you from all the wickedness. That you can go tell somebody else that they can get redeemed from the wickedness. See, when you meet Jesus, you got to tell somebody. That's the most important thing about meeting Jesus, that you tell somebody else that they can have the same life that you do. We want to be so much like, it's only for pastors and bishops and there's no, it's for everybody. We are all called to preach. We all was crazy Larry. You ain't, did, 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 did he send crazy Larry to seminary? Mm. Did he send Crazy Larry to Bible college? <laughs> We're talking about Jesus now. Did he send Crazy Larry anywhere? No, he said, go home and tell everybody, your friends, your family, everybody, all the places that you have destroyed, what I have done for you this morning and I have been compassionate to you. Oh, yeah, that's when you meet Jesus. Come on now. That's when you wake up in your mind. That's when you get in your get up in your thinking. That's when you move in your purpose. Because your purpose is to go home and tell your family and your friends what the Lord has done for you. Wake up in your mind. Get up in your thinking. And move in your purpose. And don't just go to that one little city, to the whole, to the whole region. He didn't stop in one place. He said, I must tell everybody. And once you tell it once, you'll never be able to stop telling it. I'm telling you, it's contagious. When you, when you now has given your life up to telling someone what the Lord has done for you, it's contagious. And you want to keep telling them. That's why I want to tell you this morning. Do you know that you are God's greatest miracle? Uh, do you know, that, uh, can I just tell you something else? Do you know that God made you, knew you, and called your name before the foundation of this earth? Even though you may be crazy Larry today. I'm telling you, all you got to do is run to him. Oh, you see him right now, but you but you saying not today. You see him right now, but you saying, oh, maybe next week. I, where you at? I can't meet. Where is he? Can you come pray with me? No, he said, you run to him right now. Come on, you got to run to him. And when you get there, because you see him from afar off, you got to run to him. Oh, and you got to be ready. And you, when you get there, you don't even got to say nothing. You already, he already knows because of your ability to move. In his direction. See, we always want to say he's leaning in my direction. When you move to lean in his direction, oh my God, you can be delivered of all them, all of those wickednesses, all of this is this, all those spiritual wickedness that is driving your mind crazy. If it's one thing I'm gonna tell you that's going on, the enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy your mind. He wants you walking around just like crazy Larry. Oh, but if you are Crazy Larry today, and I'm talking to some folks that you can't even tell them on the outside they're Crazy Larry. Let's be 100 today. We're going to bring a little real talk in to wake up, get up, and move in your purpose. A lot of us is Crazy Larry. We just know how to disguise it. Mm. We still ain't ran to him. We didn't learn the right cliches, the right songs, the right claps. And we still haven't ran to him. I'm imploring you today. It's not too late. He has not slacked his promises. Don't think he's just doing it for me. No, I'm running to him. I'm still running to him. It doesn't stop. You must always run to him. What Luke 9, 23, it says, if you desire to follow me, running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. You must deny yourself daily. Hallelujah. 
You must take up your cross daily. Hallelujah. And follow me. I'm running. You better keep running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. Because I want to stay with Jesus at all times. Oh, yeah. Jesus is running. He's moving. He is consistently on move. He's not dormant. What did, he, what did Peter tell us? He says, a day to us is a thousand to the Lord, and a thousand to him is one to us. Look how much time we have in between. You got to run to make up some time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wake up in your mind. Get up in your thinking and move in your purpose. And family, I'm telling you, this is a lifestyle that we must embrace. This is something that we have to take hold to and daily say, you know what? I love meeting Pastor E on Wednesdays and Fridays and Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday morning, Sunday afternoon. I love meeting him on the network. I love fellowshipping with him, but I better get mine on because guess what? For every three hours you may spend with me, there's another 21. What are you doing with him? I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. <laughs> Woo, God bless you, family. This is this has been a great day. This this word, but believe me, this word was for me. It was for me, and I had to share it this morning. That that uh, you know, man, just because you got got the right suit on, don't mean you're running to him. We need to run to him and, and teach other people to stop running to us and to run to him. And you'll see a lot more change in our world if if the change I want to see first begins in me. If I start the ball rolling and, and, and then I can share principles like this that are helping me stay, stay maintained and steady and, and being strong in the Lord and the power of his might, then you may get the uh, same motivation to go in the word of God. That's where I got it from. And study yourself to be approved to get the same principles. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And like I said right there, that was the most important part right there. Did Jesus sin? The the the, uh, the 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 now clean man. He never even gave his name. He never sent him anywhere but go, to go preach. You ain't got to worry about somebody ordaining you. Just go do the work. Go do the work. We want to open up the the portion room and we want to uh, just explain the portion room to everybody here at the network. We give freely uh, of anything that God is putting on us to say. You know what? I can get. I can go another day without it. I want you to just give it freely into the portion room right now. We want to pray for Val, for Val, my friend Val, uh, Valerie's uh, Val's family. Uh, her brother passed, and they're having his memorial today. And we want to pray for them that the, that the Spirit of God is just there to show, run to him, even today. See, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I don't really even have anything to do with the spiritual part now because the flesh will go back from what it came. But the Spirit now... Is in the presence of God, and I oh I I I you know what I celebrate that, but I want to pray for the family that 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 no no spirits will be about that 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 service today uh, that that no animosity no anger but the peace and the love of God will be all around and about you today, uh, Valerie. We got we love you. We we thank God for you, and, and uh, we're definitely praying for you. And we want to uh, uh, just just open up the, the portion room. So so I say today, this is me just giving my offering into the portion room. No, it's not money. I just want to say I can make it a day. Even if my back was to start hurting right now and God was going, I had a healing up here, you know, just to take away a pain. I want to give it into the portion room today. Anything that God was going to do for me today, completely. I'm, I'm not just saying this just to say it. I really, truly mean this from the bottom of my heart. I can make it to tomorrow with what I have right now. And I just give it freely. That that that. And I don't know your name. I don't know who he's gonna send it to. Um, because some people are like, why are you just didn't pray for me and give me that? No, no. The portion room is that we give it to God freely. Now God does what He wants to do with it. And you know He don't need our He don't need our stuff. But but just to give a free offering, it's, it feels so good for me. And so I give it mine right now. So Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for you you ordaining the portion room that we could sow daily into. Not just for wake up, get up, but daily that we can sow into, Lord, that you can bless those that need to be blessed, heal those that need to be healed, uh, uh, feed those that are hungry, Lord, and deliver everyone that, that hasn't decided that you are their personal Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray you give us the, 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 the right tools. You give us the right words. You give us the right love and attitude to invite everyone in. Not to be with us, but to be with you. Lord, we thank you today. It's going to happen. I truly believe it. Everyone's going to gonna find. It may be on that. I don't know. It's, I just believe that if we work hard enough, you'll be proud of us, Lord, that we shared your love with everybody. And that word that was sown has harvested into someone deciding and choosing you to be the boom be the Lord of their lives. We thank you. We praise you. We will not leave this place the same, but we will be changed, rearranged, 
and transformed by the renewing of our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Family, God bless you guys. I want to invite, if you're in the, um, Bell, I'm in Bellflower today uh, at 3 o'clock for the Harvest Festival uh, right there off of Bellflower Boulevard uh, in between uh, Oak and Belmont. It's the it's the uh, right by the right by the city hall. It's the uh, the whole courtyard there. They they invited us to come and do the music there. But we 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 bring the Lord out there. You know, this other ministry is going to be there too. But you know, they the city still does their little trick or treats and things like that. Well, we're going to be praying over everything, and we have a a major 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 move of of ministries that have come to come together. Uh, uh, tell your testimony for him ministries with with Pastor Larry uh, uh, um, VLB Music uh, with with uh, Pastor Venus is is teaming up with with the Now Network P two P to bring in the entertainment. We got uh, um, uh, Minister gonna be there today. We got Leviticus gonna be there today. Uh, we have a uh, 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 what's that other group's name? I just met them. We got we got some talent coming out. I'm I think my voice and came back. I'll probably sing one. But we're going to play some variety of music and have a good time. Uh, if you're in the area, come on out. Bellflower, California is not far from uh, Los Angeles. You guys know where Bellflower is. You're from out here. We, and nothing's really far. And uh, come on out early. Get there by 2.30. Uh, beat the traffic. And uh, come and celebrate, man, the Harvest Festival in Bellflower, California today. Um, Carla Clark. Uh, Mitchell is is the chairperson for that for that event, and we're praying for her that God continue to just strengthen her and protect her in the, what she's been to call, called to do there in the city of Bellflower. And uh, we thank God for her inviting us out there. Amen. God bless you guys, man. We love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. But the most important thing I want you to know before you leave here today, you were beautifully made by God. You need to start getting all those old files out. Of people calling you this and saying you're that and start to feel it remember i was sharing yesterday that you cannot just get rid of something you have to replace it with something else and i, I and i just i encourage you to to get rid of all the negative and just put in positive if you need somebody to speak positive to your life you can reach us every day on one of our broadcasts here on the now network or uh guiding light ministries is a 24-hour uh network also that we're partnering with and you can go listen to them and and get a good word you know stay in the word just absorb yourself with the word and watch god just bless you like never before i, I love you family god bless you guys and we'll talk to you next wednesday for wake up get up moving your purpose with pastor e god bless you